host, Steve Huber. And welcome to it. It is Tuesday morning here on the Steve Gruber Show. Steve and Joanne Paul with you. Joanne, good morning. Good morning. Didn't want to do it this way, Joanne, but I don't see any other way around it. There have been some incidents here in the studio and at work lately that uh, caused me to explore some changes that need to be made around here and um, kind of consider how we can approach it. I decided to get uh, an expert, you know, involved. So Colleen Rickenbacker, author of Be On Your Best Behavior, Your Best Business Behavior, Joanne, <laughs> is on the line. Just to talk. me. No, I'm just giving you a hard time. Colleen, good morning. Good morning to both of you. How are you doing? Doing well. Thanks for being here. Oh, my pleasure. Well, be on your best business behavior. You also be on your best cultural behavior, the big book of people, skills, and more. Um, Colleen, what is your goal when you get with people, whether it's in business or on the side? Um, are you a coach here, a motivator? What, what are we doing? I'm a coach, and I do a lot of corporations just to make them more comfortable with etiquette and protocol and I teach a lot with teenagers just to make them whatever the situation may be for dining, for their dress, for a better attitude. So when they walk into any situation that they're much more comfortable in that situation or with themselves. One of the things I want to talk to you about, because we have all seen this, and I'm going to guess you're older than 21 years old, so we've all seen this, in that I'll be at a group of gathering, and I'll see some young people, you know, high school, just out of high school, college, they're sitting there te texting madly. And they're texting people that are standing six feet away from them. Why don't you just put the phone in your pocket and have a conversation? I mean, we're, we're creating these social midbit, misfits with these smartphones. And you say parents on smartphones also ignoring their kids, exacerbating the problem. Constantly. Constantly. It's, we've gotten to a point because now kids are, when they're born, they're immediately exposed to any kind of electrical device. It's a comfort zone, and that's the way that they know it. They, it's much more comfortable for them to pick up this device and text somebody. And the funny part is now it's not even so much telephones. They are much more, you know, the telephones are almost going away. It's a text. They would rather text somebody. And the sad part is they don't even, it's not even a full word anymore. It's a letter or two. And so that's now being taken into our business side that you will get an email or a text in the business side that is no longer a full sentence and, heaven forbid, a paragraph, and it's just changing our whole face of everything that we do. It's like smartphone <laughs> shorthand. <laughs> exactly, yeah. It's back into the 60s where we were learning shorthand, which were, you know, forms, but now they're at least a letter, and we're getting away from the cursive, and it's going into these one-letter type things. But you're right. People are sitting side by side. I will go into a restaurant... And I will watch people sitting next to each other. You don't know if they're texting each other, but one person may be on the phone, the other person's texting somebody. And I'm thinking to myself, why did they even come to dinner together? They're not talking. They are doing something either to, you know, either one another or they're texting to other people. Yeah, why bother? They're sending out, yeah, well, it's exactly. And they're sending out loud messages, you know, either, you know, who's more important, the person that's sitting next to them, you know, they're saying, why am I even bothered to be here with you? Especially, we were at a great restaurant on Valentine's Day. There was two couples, you know, and they weren't paying attention to each other. And I wanted to go tap the gentleman on the shoulders and say, pay attention to these lovely ladies that are with you and give them the time of day. And my husband just kept saying, don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> this is still. And in the case where it's a parent and younger children, that's where you want to scream is give them time because the kids are trying to talk to the parents and it's a bad it's a bad example that they're setting to their kids. You know, with the way that everybody's running now, the kids, you know, in sports and the parents are busy with work or with whatever they're doing, give those kids some time because then it's vice versa. The kids are on their text. It's just we're losing our face to face communication. We've got to set aside and say, This is a rule. When For we sure. sit down to dinner, no phones. No texting, no electrical devices. We are going to talk to one another. You know, we do that at my house, but I'll tell you, it's, it's very difficult because... Wait, wait, wait. You talk to one another at your house? We try not to do a lot of it. <laughs> okay, just okay. check. Right. Well, we do acknowledge okay. each other, okay? <laughs> Arguments start when we talk too much. Uh, but for the most Try part... Try sign language, at least. You know? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, but for a lot of us, you know, we have to stay connected. We have to be in touch with our work and whatever we're doing. We have yeah. to monitor what's going on. So it's really hard to kind of draw that line. It is. And, and, you know, when all these things are happening, people say, well, didn't you see that in your child? Or didn't you see that with this teenager? Didn't you see that? And time will go by so fast. They say, well, how did I miss that? 
How did I see that this was going on? How did I know that this was, you know, they were doing this and that? Because it's right there, and but you were so disconnected with other things, and, you know, it, it's just getting you. You have to set some parameters. You have to set some guidelines. We're actually on a trip right now with two of our grandkids. And, so and you're on the phone. A long time. <laughs> and so, so we have to oh, hold, on. hold on, Colleen. You're on a, a trip with your grandkids, and you're on the phone? Oh, come on now. <laughs> hey, bad grandma. They're, they're still in bed. It's only like 7 o'clock here, so they're still in bed sleeping. <laughs> Fair enough. You know, it always has been the case that it's difficult for parents to connect and identify uh, with their teenage children. You know, I went through it once. I've got another one on the way. It's going to be a teenager soon. It's difficult enough to figure it out. If you further disconnect yourself or separate yourself or put a smartphone between you and your kids, man, nothing good can come from this. And I, I've watched this for a long time, and I do believe that we're creating a whole generation of people that are socially inept because they don't have personal conversations. I mean, can you imagine how happy people are when they now actually get a handwritten letter in the mail? I send out yeah, handwritten thank you notes. Yeah, in sentences. I, I send out handwritten thank you notes as a, as a matter of policy for a couple of my small businesses that I own because people now remember. If they get a handwritten letter in the mail, man, that's a big deal. Oh, it's a shock. It's a shock. And I, I try to preach that in the, especially college kids, that all of a sudden when it gets down to two people, you know, maybe it's between you and Joanne, and all of a sudden you're both equal for that position. But all of a sudden Joanne sends a thank you note, mm -hmm. and if everything is equal across the board, I would bet a million dollars that Joanne would get that job over you just because she finished the whole product, the whole process, and she just, she made a conclusion all of a sudden. And that's she's how much they prettier. Want client. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, exactly. So sad. there yeah. you go. And you know, Colleen... It's a, we only have about 30 seconds left, but, you know, the flip side of this is that kids really do well in technology. I mean, they're really getting it. Oh, you yeah, they do. If I need something on my computer, if I need something, that I will go to my youngest grandchild and ask them how to do it. <laughs> because they understand that they have no fear for it, and this is what they've grown up with. It's a comfort zone. It's a pure comfort zone for them. They're, they feel good with it. That's how they communicate with all their friends. And, unfortunately, that's the way we're going, good or bad. But you still have to take that time for an eye-to-eye contact, a hug, and like you said, every once in a while, put, put it all down and write something, a handwritten note. Real Please human interaction. Again. Yeah, real human yes. interaction. Colleen, we have best. to leave it there, my friend. Colleen Rickenbacker, love to have you back, though, and talk more about this because we are becoming a group of people that smartphones are dumbing us down in many different ways. We appreciate your insight. My pleasure. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. You too. Colleen Rickenbacker, author of Be On Your Best Business Behavior, Be On Your Best Cultural Behavior, and much more. You heard it only here on the Steve Gerber Show. It's Tuesday morning. Steve and Joanne, back after this.